Well, God is good. Amen. Go with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, if you would. I'm not going to preach for very long because I believe the Lord wants to minister to us tonight. But I do want us to get into the Word. I believe that in order to be refreshed, we need to have these days where we are in the Word. Can you say amen? amen? We are in times right now where the Word of God is more important than we've ever had it be. It's so important right now that we understand why we do what we do when we do it. And it's very, very vital that we understand how God wants to equip the saints. And in these times, we want to be ready for what God wants to do because He wants to equip people in ways that we never thought possible. And He is shifting the, 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 the um, paradigm of what used to be and what was into what He has originally intended. And I think that through the years, one of the things that's happened is, you know, we've always had the ability as mankind to go from one ditch to the next. You anybody ever noticed that? It's like we go from one ditch to the next, and we don't even mean to. Anybody remember the armor bearer thing? Some of you may remember. Remember how people would fight over Bibles of the anointed ones? I got to carry their Bible. I carry. Listen, I tell people all the time, if you have to carry my Bible, get me to a hospital. I'm in bad shape. So, but what's happened is, is that we've got people going from one ditch to the other, and we are in a season right now where, folks, it is so vital because we have people on YouTube saying all kinds of things, and people are watching things, people on TikTok that are saying things, and I'm not against those who are preaching and teaching right, but what's happening is there's so many voices, and you can scroll through something and hear so many voices in one setting. And all those voices will begin to bring confusion. So in these times, we want to absolutely be anchored in the Word of God, understanding why we do what we do, and being able to explain it in service. So in doing that, that begins to bring us into a place to where we not only teach, but we release people into their callings, into their giftings, and we also are able then to equip them for the work of the ministry. Can you say amen? I didn't actually hold your finger there in Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 real quick. Father, we thank you for tonight. We ask for you to give us a spirit of revelation and knowledge of you. We ask you to open our eyes to see what we, can't, we haven't seen before. Give us ears to hear what we haven't heard before. Father, give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen? In Ephesians chapter 4, it says here that there are fivefold ministries. It says, he gave some to be, in verse 11, it says, he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we are to edify the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. The knowledge of the Son of God. A perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You get that? To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body and for the edifying of itself in love. So when we come together, we want to be able to explain why we're doing what we're doing and equipping of the saints so that they are taught and in, the, in this process take the time to be able to teach them why we stand on the scriptures and why we believe the way we do. Because even, even in, in some circles and different ministries, there's times where they don't necessarily do prophecy. They don't lay hands on people. They teach it, but they don't do it. And so when they begin to see something online or hear something or be in a service where that begins to happen, or maybe they begin to sing in the Spirit, and they usually don't sing in the Spirit in their church. So we want to be able to teach and to equip why we do what we do and, how, and where the Scripture is that we stand on for it. Can you say Amen. That's really important in these hours that we live in because there's a lot of people confused. And none, I'm not saying anybody's done anything wrong. I'm just saying that this is something that I believe we are in right now, that the Lord is looking and He's wanting His church to really, truly stay in that place where we're not just saying the Spirit said, because every time the Spirit says something, it can be anchored through this. Amen? So when He says something, we can say, well, how do you know that? Well, it's very simple. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
It talks about the gifts of the Spirit. It also talks about the voice of God. My sheep know my voice. So we, we can begin to teach on this and begin to get people ready for what God wants them to do. And in the process, bring them back to, way, to where they were originally created to be. Amen? It's good to do that. So Ecclesiastes chapter 7. It says, it says in this, it says in verse 8, And the end of a thing is better than its beginning. Be patient in spirit. Be patient in spirit is better than proud in spirit. Do not hasten your spirit to be angry, for anger rests on the bosom of fools. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For you do not inquire wisely concerning this. Let me say it again. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? We are in some difficult times right now. We are in difficult times as a nation. It's only going to get more difficult as we go. Things are going to be getting to get a little more intense. Praise the Lord. But we were called here for such a time as this. Listen, no matter how intense it gets, the fire of God is always more intense than the intensity the world can give you. Amen? And what happens is we have to literally divorce ourselves from certain things and situations and maybe uh, things that we may find of comfort because God's calling his church to really be radically on fire and in love with him. Can you say amen? And he wants us to be in this place because what happens is I've heard several people and I've talked to several pastors and I'm not saying anybody in here has done this. No one has. But I've talked to several pastors and some have said, I wish it was like it was back then. And see, we can't go back to there. We're called to redeem the times today because the days are evil. We're called here today for such a time as this. And no matter how difficult things may get, we're still here and we're still the reason that, that God has given, that, that there's hope in the world. Because the church is the reason. Look at your neighbor and say, you're the reason. There's still hope. Now you may say, how can you say that? Because you carry Jesus. You carry Jesus. You have the words of eternal life. And when you have the words of eternal life, what happens is that means that you are literally just waiting that the words could be released. And God is setting up the church to get ready for this in this time. So we're not looking at this saying, oh no, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? No, I'm not going to get scared. I'm not going to barrel up my gasoline. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get into that fear mode. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and say, okay, Lord, what can I do to logically be ready for what you want to do in these days. However it is, what can I do to logically be ready for what the Spirit of God is saying? Because if I get in fear, then what happens is I'm no longer operating in faith, and now I'm beginning to operate in a place where I'm operating out of my soul, and I'm operating trying to operate out of spirit, and that's where confusion exists. So we're not to say those days were better, because these days right here are great days. Amen? I mean, these days right here are days where we can begin to see the Spirit of God move in our land, move in our area. And we may say, well, I'm not seeing it. We just need to get on our face before God. Right? Isaiah, we just read, we had people prophesying about this, right? He was giving keys out tonight. Keys. He's the key. And because he, the key is in you, then that means that you're the key. Amen? You're the key for someone's breakthrough. You're the key for someone's deliverance. You're the key for someone's salvation. So when we understand this, we begin to realize that there is so much that God wants to do, and he is preparing his church in this hour to be ready for it. But one of the things that says here, it says to wait upon the Lord, right? That's what we heard tonight, prophecies that were given tonight. There were a lot of prophecies, and people might say, well, how do we know what all of the saying? The Lord literally at times will address different people in, different, in the room at the same time, with different prophecies that are given. Some prophecies the key speaks to. Some prophecies the rocking chair speaks to. Some prophecies the, 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 the waiting upon the Lord speaks to. But what we want to do is we want to glean from those prophetic words and begin to understand, okay, these are the next steps ahead by which we're called to so that we're ready for what God wants to do and we're ready for what he has. And so, see, it says in, in, in Isaiah chapter 40, it says... In verse 12, who has measured the waters, the, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and measured the heaven with the span and calculated out the dust of the earth in measure and weighed out the mountains in scales and the hills in balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? 
or, or as his counselor has taught him. Now, the reason I'm reading this to us is because in these times, God is still bigger than anything. In these times, he's still greater than anything we could ever have fought, anything we could ever go through, anything. So he measures the universe with the span of his hand, and yet he knows where we're at. He measures the universe. He held the waters in his hand. He weighed out the mountains and the hills. He, he did all of this, and yet he still knows where we're at. So when we're going through things and when we're facing situations and circumstances, whether it be in our personal lives, whether it be in our churches or in our ministries, however it may be, when we are facing these things, we've got to understand that God in his, in, in his majestic sovereignty, he still knows what's going on. He's not taken back. He's not scared. But he's ready. All we need to do is step in and we wait upon him and he begins to give us the understanding. So I'm not going to look to the days when things were easy. How many of y'all know that when your kids were little, did anybody have those walkers, those strollers, like, you know, the ones that you would, you, you would like, lift them up, and they would sit down in it, and they had wheels on them, and they would, what are those things called? Walkers. Okay, thank you. So, like, when I, I instantly thought walker, and I thought walker, so sorry. So, not one of those, but, so... You know, your kids, <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord, I hope you're getting refreshed. <laughs> so your kids are in the walkers, and, and you know, when they're first starting to walk, and they kind of touch the ground, and they kind of move somewhere, and they get up on the kitchen floor, or maybe you have wood, wood floor, I don't know, but yeah, they would step, and they would just kind of go sailing for a little bit, and they was like, wow, that, you could tell they thought that was fun, right? See, sometimes in our walk, we're kind of like that. Sometimes in ministry, we're kind of like that. I was like, man, God, that was so easy. We hit a season where God's saying, okay, now I want you to walk on your own. And I want you to develop those muscles. And you're going, oh, but God, you know, this is really hard. But we have to look and realize, again, he's the same God that measured the universe with the span of his hands. And yet he still has our back. In every situation, every circumstance, everything, he still has our back. And so God is calling the church in this hour to be ready for what is coming and not to be afraid. Now, we are in a time right now, I shared this this past Sunday when I recently went, had went to Mexico and was preaching in Mexico and the Lord just, he was so good. He gave us, gave me this revelation and, and, um, and this, it just kind of came out. I mean, I'm not saying it was anything that I'd done, I had done because it wasn't, but it was just a revelation that the Lord had given. And I want us to understand it tonight because it's really, really important for us to realize how truly crucial it is that we keep our eyes on Him in all the situations. Because there's a lot of situations going on right now that you can get confused on. And there's a lot of things going on right now. Um, we want to be careful uh, of what we take in. And we're in a season right now where there's so many voices. And I want to encourage you, and again, this is just a suggestion... But I would encourage you just to listen to the voice of the Spirit of God by the Word of God. Because in these times, the Word of God is the utmost authority. In these times, we go back to the Word of God and we can base our life on this. We can base our whole, our whole trajectory of our life completely upon what the Word of God says. And as we do, we trust and faith, have faith in Him because we want to build according to what He has not according to what the world says we should have, not according to what religion says we should have, not according to any other option, but He is the only way. So when He's the only way, we begin to realize, okay, we want to step into this place. And how many of y'all know that right now we would be living in a time to where you could say that things in the church, not your churches, but the church as a whole, that there's a lot of lukewarmness going on. There's a lot of compromise going on. There's a lot of people who are not in their word anymore because they would rather be on social media. They would rather be on different things. They've got other things to occupy their time. And when those things occupy their time, one of the biggest things that we need to do is we need to bring the church back into its original design so that we don't miss a thing. Because the thing about it is that when you're in the word of God, when you're spending time in his presence, when you spend time wanting to hear from him, it changes things. It changes everything. When I was in um, another nation that was persecuted, one of the things that happened in this nation was they all, they all had cell phones, 
But you know, they, I rarely saw them get on their cell phone. You know what they did most of the time? They spent time praying. They spent time reading the word. They spent time trying to find out what the next step ahead was because they had to have, literally, they had to have the strategy from heaven and the wisdom from God to be able to move out into that next place or they could all die. That's why when we would meet together and we'd, we, we ate this one night, we ate in this, at this, at this, uh, at this um, um, house one night, and there was just a little light bulb hanging down in the ceiling, and it was dim, and, and uh, the pastors were there, and they, I had a, we had a translator, and the translator spoke to us because the pastors were speaking to us, and they said they wanted to thank us for coming, and they said that they, this was something that they cherished because they didn't know if they would ever be able to see us again. And you see, when you have that kind of understanding, and I'm coming at you from, an under, from, a, from a situation where looking at the persecuted church and looking at America. I'm not against the American church. Some people come back and are kind of jaded towards the American church. I'm not. But I'm at a place where I'm saying we've got to come into the understanding now of what is important. We've got to come back to the real basics and understand we're all in, in this together. We are, a, we are the body of Christ. Doesn't matter what's over our doorstep. We are the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. So wherever you're at, I want you to succeed. Because if you succeed, I succeed. Because Jesus is succeeding. And so that's all that matters. So if he succeeds, we win. So it's not about trying to be somebody great or be something this or be something that. It's just about wanting the king to be elevated into a place of glory. Amen? And when we have that, we have it all. And it boils things down to what's really important. So we're no longer fighting over this or fighting over that. We're looking and saying, no, no, I want the word and I want the king to be lifted up. So when he's lifted up, everything else is great. He'll draw all men unto himself. And there's enough lost people in the world to fill our churches over, I would say at least a hundred times over. Praise the Lord. And I hope that happens for you. I hope you have so many workers, that so many volunteers that are so wore out that they're calling you saying, I don't know what to do. And you say, keep going, right? Praise the Lord. Because that's what we need in this hour. Look at me. Let's go to Revelations chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3. I did this this past Sunday, uh, explained it, but I want to go into more in depth in this in this time right now. It says, unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, these things says the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor and blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with the eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my, on my throne. I will, I will, I'm sorry, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So we live in a time right now where there's everything we need is at our disposal. Everything we need is at our fingertips. And yet we are in a place right now where the church has been lukewarm. And so we look at this and what happens is, we can become frustrated as leaders, as pastors, as, 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 as any leader in the body of Christ, or as Christians in general, people in general. We can become frustrated because we love the Lord, and we want to see His will done, and we want to see His will come, His kingdom come, His will be done. But what happens is in our frustration, we look and we can become pessimistic and say, God, I don't know what to do with these people. And, as, and the best thing I can tell you is this, is that when I was down there in Mexico, I had went through a time where... Becky and I were on the phone, and we was talking, and as we were talking, the Lord kind of began to, this question came out of our conversation in our prayer time, and it was that, would you, want, would, you want to be, would you want God to be as faithful to you as you have been to him? And it was really a gut check, and this question came out of our prayer time, and, and um, you know, and, and as we get off the phone, I'm spending some more time with the Lord, I'm preparing for the service the next day, and I began to, the, began, the Lord began to show me things regarding my own life so nobody has to be like well is he preaching to me now i'm preaching about myself so you can be really at ease 
But, you know, I had, I had recently had went to uh, White Horse Christian Center. Some of you may know White Horse. Uh, but I was out there, and um, I, was, I was at, the, at the, uh, the conference. It was the prophetic gathering. And I had just gotten a, a text, and in this text, uh, it was from some people overseas, and they said that these five pastors and their families had been kidnapped, and that the, they were beginning to be, there was a danger that they were, that they were going to be sold into slavery and be lost forever. They would kill the pastors and take their wives and children, wives would be sold into slavery for work. Uh, the, the kids would be sold into sex slavery. I mean, that's horrendous. And so... I'm standing there, we're in worship, I get this text, and we sit back down, the worship's done, and, you know, Pastor Jeff gets up front, and uh, he goes, uh, Brother Dean, he calls me up, and he says, you got a text message, didn't you? And I said, yeah, and I was like, this, number one, this is crazy, and number two, he's reading my text messages from afar, so this is like, <laughs> but he, he, he said, uh, he, said uh, he made a comment, he said, you've not been doing well with handling those who are calling you, and they're dying. They're mar- being martyred. He, he basically was telling me I was internalizing it, and I was. And the Lord showed this to us, to me, after we had got off the phone, and it really began to resonate within me because I had wanted to be hot for the Lord or cold for the Lord, depending if, he wants to, if it's a hot day, I'm a cool drink. If it's a cold day, I'm a hot drink, right? Praise the Lord. But I didn't want to be lukewarm. But there are areas in our lives where we can be lukewarm and not even realize it. And in these areas that we become lukewarm, it becomes dangerous because we don't even realize that we're trying to handle it on our own, not keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. And so the Lord literally showed this to me, and, and it really began to, it, it moved me tremendously. I mean, it just really meant a lot to me, and it, it revela- the revelation was astounding to me because it brought breakthrough to my life. And so I shared this with Mexico, and I shared it this past Sunday, but I want to share it with us again. So Adam and Erica, can I have you guys come on up here? Amen. So let's give them a round of applause. And here's the thing about it. We, I, I, we had started, if you guys would, if you would hold out your hands like this. I had done this in Michigan as well, but as, as I was past Pastor Felix Place, and, uh, but the Lord has just continued to build with me on this, and so we're just going to go with this. So she's going to, you hold out your hands like that, you put your hands down, all right? You're going to get closer to him. All right, now hold her hands because your arm's going to get tired. Just hold her, just help her hold him up. Yeah. So see, actually, I'll tell you what, you guys go up on the stage so everyone can see you. Okay. Yeah, just for a minute. <laughs> How many of you ever had those times where things begin to happen and then you begin to back away from the Lord because you're trying to figure it out and it stresses you out? Anybody ever had those stress moments, okay, where that circle right there, like that space between her and him, that this right here is all of us. She represents all of us, okay? Don't worry, God, I've got it. I love you and we're really close, but I've got it. Anybody ever have that? I'm going to come up here with you guys, just to make it really awkward. <laughs> so in this time, what happens is, is that God is wanting his church to keep their eyes on him. But we put this space between us and him because we, don't, we got this thing we're working through. And we're coming to the Lord, but we're holding on to it. And as leaders and as, as pastors and as, just as believers, this is the easiest thing to do. Whether it's offense, whether it's fear, whether it's worry, whether it's doubt, whether it's unbelief, we hold on to it. I mean, we're still trying to work through this, but he's not, we're not able to work through it because we really haven't given it to him. And, and this is what happens to us. And see, what happens is when we begin to hold ourselves back from him, we then begin to find ourselves in a place where we're now living in a time where that lukewarmness begins to take place. And it may be just be in one area of our lives, but how many of you ever had water that was cold and then someone poured a warm bottle of water in it? Or a warm glass of water in it? And all of a sudden, that coldness, that coldness of that water is no longer as cold as it was. Or if it was hot, they pour a cold or cool glass in it. It's no longer as hot as it was. It becomes lukewarm. 
And see, what happens is, no matter what area of our lives that we hold on to in this thing, this begins to be that place where we're lukewarm. But God doesn't want us to be in this place where we're lukewarm. He wants us to have our gaze fixed on Him. Now, Erica is His bride. So because of that, you don't want her to hold on to anything that that's going to keep her from you, right? You want her to give you everything, which, uh, whether it's the good, bad, the ugly, you'll take it all, right? Yeah. So what happens is this is how God is. It's a type and shadow of us with the Lord because we are his bride, and he wants his bride to be ready. He wants his bride to be ready for the situations at hand. And here's what's happening in the church I'm seeing more and more is that on fire, spirit-filled believers are beginning to worry about the days ahead, and they're beginning to hold on to this. Because we don't know what's going to happen. We listen to this voice. We listen to that voice. We listen to this person over here and that person over here. And this prophet said this and this prophet said that. And what happens is it leaves us confused. And it leaves us going, oh my gosh. And it leaves this space right here. Now, am I against prophets? No. Am I against people who have prophecies? No. The Bible says don't despise prophecies. But what happens to us is that we begin to hold on to that very thing. And now it creates that distance and we start to slowly, step by step, lose that walk with the Lord, lose that closeness with the Lord, and that's not what he wants. Because he wants his bride to be on fire for him. He wants his bride to be everything that he is looking for. So he wants his bride to be in his gaze. So he has her gaze, but he, he wants her to be in his gaze. She, he wants her to literally come into that place where she's face-to-face with him. So if you guys would, go ahead and get forehead to forehead. So in this type and in this situation, Erica, can you see anything besides Adam? Nope. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So see, when we talk about the face of God and we talk about the presence of God, God wants us, when it says that, when Moses would speak with God face to face as a man would speak with his friend, when it says face to face, it literally is saying this close is what it's saying. That's how God was. He was saying he, he was right there in their face, right there in the face of Moses. And see, this is what Moses, this is what God wants for us as his bride. He wants his bride to actually be so engulfed and so enthralled in all of who he is that the stress of the vision, the stress of the money, the stress of the people, the stress of the situations, the stress of the the whatever it may be, is all taken care of because we see him. We behold him. It's not that everything will, you know, that, that, that you're not going to go through trials or situations, but that even as we go through those trials and situations, He is still all that we need. So I'm not being distracted by the cares of the world and being held back. Go ahead and go back to where your arm's back out here. Because it's easy for us to say, now, I want to just kind of share this because it says here, it says you say that you are, you are wealthy and you have need of nothing and do not know that you are, you are wretched Miserable, poor, blind, and naked. See, when this happens, see, we think we're okay. We think we're, we're good. God, I know you've called me to this place. I'll figure this out. This is my responsibility. Right, but with him. It's your responsibility with him. No, Lord, I know I got this child I'm believing for. I got this son or this daughter or this grandchild that I'm believing for. Lord, I'll take care of it. Nope, take care of it with him. Because as we take care of it with him, he's going to give us so much more. And as he gives us so much more, he is preparing in this season for the church to really begin to step out into the greatness by which it's called to. But in order for that to happen, that means that the church has to stay in his gaze. Because we are in a time right now where if you begin to deviate from the path, remember it's a narrow way, right? Enter through the narrow gate. It's a narrow gate. He is the narrow gate. You enter by any other way. I got this anointing. I'll do this because of my anointing. I'll do this because of this word. I'll do that because of that. No, it's all in him. It's all in him. So when I'm talking about standing in a place where the church gets ready, we're standing in a place where we're keeping our gaze on him. Amen? And there's days where you're going to be frustrated. Now, I want you to look frustrated like irritated, like irritated, frustrated, like the kids, right? Oh, yeah, there you are. Oh, the kids, right? So they have five kids. So so 
things can be frustrating. So you're in a place of frustration. Now, agitation, yeah. It puts it out. While she's there, at that place right now, what happens is this place right here becomes lukewarm. Because in frustration and agitation, we back off from him. And he didn't call us to that. Because he called us to come closer so that we could be able to be able, we could be able to literally be rich in, in what he has called us to be in, that we could be taken care of in what he has called us to do, that we could see things the way he sees things. And in order for that to happen, that means the church has got to be ready. So there's a whole other thing that's going on right now. So what God's doing is he's bringing the church in a place right now where maybe she's, she's irritated or agitated with this or that. Or maybe she's in worry or she's in, in doubt or in fear of situations that are going on around in the world. And see, what God does is he shakes us because he doesn't want those things to stay in the way anymore. He's a loving father. He's a good God. And he wants his bride to be ready for him. So he allows a shaking to take place so that we can get ready to keep our gaze upon him. So we turn back to him. And I mean, listen, I mean, it's, it's a ministry thing for those who are pastors in here. It's a ministry thing where there are times where you're like, God, I really didn't understand why they kept doing that. And it not only caused me headaches, but it caused me a lot of loss of sleep. And now I'm really irritated and I just, oh, I got a shepherd's rod, God. I guess I'm the only one. So anyways, <laughs> what happens is, though, is that God wants us to be in a place where we can literally engage with him. And so it could be like that with ministry. It could be like that with whatever it may be, our kids, our family, our marriage. But God wants us to be ready to be able to be in his gaze. So go back together. So when we're here and we're in this gaze, what happens is it says, anoint your eyes with the eye salve that you may see. And, you, you know, one of the things about it is that we are seeing him because we are seeing him for who he is. He is everything to us. He is everything. Erica, if, if someone were to offer you a lot of money, say billions of dollars, for you, to, for you to leave your family, you wouldn't do it, would you? It's not worth it. No, no money in the world can, can compare to that, can it? So it's the same way. No money in the world can compare to what Jesus is for us. No money in the world can compare to anything that God has already called us to. So be ready in this time because God's looking for a church that's really going to begin to engage with him in a new place, in a new place of intimacy, but a new place of strength in the word. Now, step back if you would, Adam. Now, Erica, just grab a hold of the word and hold on to it. Just hold on to it. Yep. This is where we need to be at. Because when we're here, if you would turn and face them, when we're here like this, at this point in time, see, now we're engaging with God still, but he is his word, right? He's a word made flesh, right? So we are engaging with his word, and we are holding on to the word so closely because all we want is him, and we want to be able to find out, again, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm seeking the kingdom and his way of doing and being right. So I'm seeking him. She's going to seek him. Again, she represents all of us. She's going to seek him through the word. And as she seeks him through the word, she's going to begin to find the answers and everything that's needed as she continually seeks after him. But if she takes her eyes away from the word, her eyes away from him, and she begins to go into any other way, whether it's this way or that way, or, oh, check this one out, check that one out, it begins to stray us away from the word and we want to come back to the power and the truth of the word of God to where we are now equipped for everything that God's called us to. In these days ahead, it's the equipping of the word that's going to be so vital for us because the word is it's vital for every one of us. Individually, if you're a leader, you're a pastor, for the people that follow you, it's going to be essential that we be a people that get in the word of God and find out each and every step so that we're ready in each and every position or each and every circumstance that will come about. Because there's a lot of things happening right now, and God's called the church to get ready for the days ahead. Now, the days ahead, we're to walk in victory. Can you say Amen. We are to walk in victory, but that means that we have to be prepared for every good work he's called us to. Can you say amen? amen? Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys can sit down. Let's give them a round of applause. 
So in order for us to be ready, we have to understand here that the Lord is calling the church in this hour to be focused on what's coming ahead, and that's Him. He's the one that we're focused on. No matter what happens, he's still constant. He's still true. No matter what happens, he's the one I'm going to trust. And I want to do things his way. Now, it says here, it says, Because you say that I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now, I want to just talk to us for a minute about being naked. Because in Mexico, I was at, stayed at this hotel. They put me up in this very nice place. It's one of the nicest places I've ever stayed in. Uh, when, I, when I've been in missions trips. Um, very nice. And I was like, wow, God, this is a real blessing. But I walk through, I look at the hotel, I'm like, man, it's awesome. And I walk into the hotel, and there is this statue of this naked woman right in the center of the hotel. And I'm like, that's awkward. But what happened was, and, and, and please understand me, is that I, as, as I was talking with Becky about this, I'm like, this is crazy. They got the statue of this naked woman here in this hotel. It's like, Excuse me, lady, you know, and uh, um, we're talking about this. We're, we're just kind of talking about it. We're reading through Matthew or reading through uh, Revelations, and, and um, it began to dawn on me how when he said that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, and one of the reasons that nakedness is so, is so um, mentioned in this is because to be naked means a point of embarrassment, and if we have a point of embarrassment, that means that we've not been clothed according to what he wants us to be clothed with. And he says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, which we'll go back to that in a second, that you may be rich and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Now go with me to Revelations 19. Revelations 19. If we look at this, and it says here in verse, let me just read, start from verse 6. It says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of, the great, of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of a mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife, now listen to this, his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. We are to, in this time, I want to encourage you, stay refreshed, stay in his eyes, stay in his sight, because we are to be refreshed in his, in his place and keeping our gaze upon him. And as we keep our gaze upon him, we are literally leading people into the understanding, as we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, and on through, how we are to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. There's a work that's to be happening here. And it just said that they were able to equip, or they were able, the bride was able to be clothed with the fine linen, which is the acts or the deeds of the saints. There are good works that our churches are called into, not religious works to, to, to glorify the name of a ministry, but works by which it glorifies Jesus. Because when it glorifies Jesus, then everything else falls in place. When it glorifies Jesus, nothing else matters. So when we're teaching, and we're, 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 as people, as we're just going through life, as we are just going through life, and we realize that we ourselves are called into this place where we are equipped for the good works that God's called us to, because we look through the Word and we find out what it says, and by doing it, it begins to equip us, and we begin to be clothed with the fine linen, which is the righteous acts or the righteous deeds of the saints. So we are ready for the situations that may come. It did not say that the situations would be easy, it said that we would be equipped for every good work. And it goes back, let's, now let's go back to this. It says, buy from me, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Go with me to 1 Peter. As we look at 1 Peter, it says here this, this is just amazing to me. It says, in verse 6, it says in this, I greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grie grieved by various trials. Listen to this. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So 
though we may go through various trials, though we may go through various trials, it doesn't matter what kind of trials we're going through. It doesn't matter how bad things look because I know who's greater. It doesn't matter how dark things look. I know who's greater. It doesn't matter what happens here or what happens there or what's, what's held, held up here or what I can't buy there. Listen, I know who's greater. And it doesn't stop what we're called to in these times. So we're called into such a time as this. So that means when things get dark, we should be like shining bright, man. We should be ready for what the world has. And we should be able to say, okay, let's move on. This is the time when the saints can go out and really begin to proclaim Jesus and proclaim him with power and see tremendous signs and wonders done. So we don't hold back. We understand that the genuineness of our faith, though it may be tested by trials, would be to the praise, honor, and glory of God. When it's to the praise, the honor, and the glory of God, we are prepared for what he is one, what He is uh, getting ready to do, and we are saying, Lord, let it be this day that we're ready. Let it be this day that our churches are ready. Let it be this day that our families are ready. Let it be this day that our kids are ready. So we're training and we're equipping, and so we're not taking anything for granted anymore, right? We're, we're wanting, I mean, we're in a time right now where everything is being challenged, Everything is being challenged. Everything, I mean, people are challenging the Word of God. We have people challenging all kinds of situations in the church. We have churches that are closing, churches that pastors are falling. We have all kinds of things that are going on. But what happens is when the, the bride, the bride has made herself ready, we're in that season right now where we are to prepare and make ourselves ready. And that, that's, that is, uh, that may sound like works, but it's literally the good works he's called us to. I'm looking for the good works he's called us to. So I'm preparing. I'm making myself ready. And in this time, there's a lot of refinement. Has anybody experienced refinement in the last two years? Did anybody experience refinement during the great toilet paper shortage of 2020? (laughs) Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, in verse 1. This is my last scripture. We'll stop here. But it says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. See, there's going to be a remnant that's going to be left over. Now, we want for there to be more than just a a small remnant. We want it to be as many as we can, right? Because today's a day of salvation. We're looking to be able to witness to the lost. We're looking to be able to share our faith. We want to see people saved. We want to see disciples made. But we understand that there's a remnant that's going to be left over. Because having these promises, we should cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So that means that in the fear of God, I'm looking to be able to say, all right, I don't want to go anywhere where he's not. Do you know what Erica represented when she did this? It was a lack of the fear of God. Because when we hold ourselves out like this, from God, even though we say, well, we're still with him, and we may be, but we're, we're lukewarm. Even though we hold ourselves out like this, God's looking for a bride that's either hot or cold. Again, hot drink on a cold day, cold drink on a hot day. But he's looking for that bride that is all about him. And in those times, what takes place is that in those situations, what he is looking for is he's looking for us to stand in a place of the fear of God. So what happens is, is that when she was, when they were head to head, at that point in time, she was as close to him as she could get. So the fear of God brings us close to him and says, I don't want to be anywhere where you're not. I want to be completely right here, captivated in your gaze. And what we need to do is we need to realize as we're captivated in that gaze with him, then at that point in time, wherever he leads us, he's going to be able to take care of us. Wherever, whatever situations may happen, it's going to be okay. Now, I've used this testimony before, but please understand I'm using this because this just, like to me, this just is one of those things that absolutely ministers to me. And it just, it, it changes things for me. I have friends of mine who were uh, uh, in another nation 
They were persecuted, and they were on a mountain. They were on this high mountain, and they were up in the, uh, they were up in the, the, the Himalayas. And while they're up in the Himalayas, there's landslides. There's landslides all the way through this place. And, I mean, these mountains are caving in. They're going everywhere. All these earthquakes are happening, and all these things are taking place. And he's with the other pastors, and they're going to all these villages that are up in these mountains where there's no one saved. And they're going up in these mountains, and, and these landslides are happening, and these, they're, they're literally seeing the ground shake, and they're seeing the land give out. And so they begin to sing. They just sit down like, this may be the last, so I'm going to be ready. So they begin to sing, what a friend I have in Jesus. And they're singing this, man, preparing to meet him. They're singing this and getting ready to say, we're going to go be with Jesus soon. And they're not afraid. They're just singing to the Lord. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, I was in those mountains, and I hate heights. Hate heights. But we're on these mountains, and it's just like, you know, there's just such a, 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 a surrender to the Lord in this place where you're just saying, okay, Lord, whatever you want. And at that point in time, what took place was literally the mountain gave way beside them, the mountain gave way on the other side of them, but they were completely saved. Completely, completely safe. Nothing happened to them whatsoever. So you see, wherever Jesus leads us, he's going to take care of us. Now, the backstory to this is this, is that they were in prayer, and the Lord told them to go to this part of the nation. And he said, there's going to be a great shaking, but, I, but don't fear, I will be with you. And they're on this mountainside. And this great shaking happens, an earthquake. And this land on both sides of them gives way, perfectly fine. I said, well, how did you get out of where you were at? They said, we walked across where the landslide had been. I said, did the ground give way? Just a few rocks, but nothing like it was. See, how would that happen unless God took care of them? So what I'm coming at us with is the, the reality that, folks, we can trust him in these times. We can trust him in these times, and though things may seem a little crazy, and though things may seem, you know, just here or there or wherever, the reality is we're called here for such a time as this. You may be going through a trial, but the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold to the praise and the honor of the glory of God, that it would be refined, that it would be to show forth for his praise and glory. So in these times where these refinements are going through, we rejoice in God because he's leading us through these times. We rejoice in God because he's taking us in these times. We rejoice in God for everything that he is doing and what he's going to continue to do. Amen? Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Thank you, Father. Tonight, what I want to do is this, is that if you've been in that place where there's been, you've kept that space between you and God, maybe there's things you're worried about, maybe there's things you're, you're just dealing with that it's been hard for you to deal with, and I'm not here to condemn anybody, because I believe that God is a merciful God, and I believe that He loves us, and He wants us to be restored to Him. So if there's been things that you've dealt with, things, that, situations that are going on that you've held on to, and that you've just kind of kept yourself back from Him, I want to tell you, now's the time for us to come into that place where we say, okay, God, I want to get closer. I want to be in that place, Lord God, where you're taking me into the further, the further things that you have for me. I don't want to hold anything back anymore because God wants us to step into that place to where we're ready for, our, for everything that he has. Because in the days ahead, folks, there's going to be times where that's going to be tried in us. And thank you. And as it's tried in us, we need to be ready for what God wants to do. So we're not going to be in fear, we're not going to be in worry, and we're not going to be in what ifs. If we're, if we're focused on Him, He's everything. So if you're here tonight, and that's been you, one of the things I want to do is I want to just open up the altar for prayer for that. So that way, everyone is, is just getting to that place where they need to be with God, because God wants to bring refreshing to us tonight. Amen? The second thing is this, is that I also believe that there is, there is an equipping of the saints, there is a releasing of strategy and teaching. There's a releasing of strategy and preaching, and there's a releasing of strategy and demonstration. Because all three, all three things are needed. There are preachers, there are teachers, and the, but they all said, Paul said, I did not come with persuasive words, but in demonstration of the Spirit's power. 
And there's a demonstration of the Spirit's power that has to happen in our churches. There's a demonstration of the Spirit's power that has to happen where we're no longer holding back, but we're saying, okay, Lord, He's God. He measured the universe with the span of His hands, and He is ready for whatever, whatever needs here because He wants to equip the body to be ready to be able to minister to those who are hurting, minister to those who need healing, or minister to those who are lost. But there's an equipping for that tonight, and I really believe that God is bringing that to the body because, man, there's refreshing tonight for that. There's refreshing that God wants to bring that brings us into a place of understanding that says, yes, Lord, everything you have for me, I'm ready for. Amen? So if, if you wouldn't mind putting something on back there for me, please. What happens is, as if that is you, if you need to come forward for, for any kind of... Um, any kind of just coming to get closer with the Lord as far as that which you've been holding back on, I just want you to come up here to my left and your right. Just come up here over here on this side if you would. The Lord just wants to minister to you. If, you're come, if, you, if you want to come up for just that refreshing and that, that impartation for what God's going to do in the days ahead for that strategy and teaching, strategy and preaching, and strategy and demonstration, I believe there is a real anointing tonight for not only the gifts, but the sevenfold spirits of God that they begin to release that might upon the church. There's a might that is to be upon the church today. Amen. So if anybody wants prayer for that, I would just invite you to come on forward. If not, if anybody, if, if, you, if, if not, well, then we want to thank you for coming. But if, if you want to come on forward, come on up. Those who are coming up to, to come to that place where you're not wanting that space between you and God, come over here to my left, your right. Those who want the impartation for the, the teaching, demonstration, and preaching, come up here to my right, your left. Both stand right in the middle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come right on up. You would stand right up here on this, on the line right up here. Yeah, just come right up. Yep. We, we jokingly call this the river, so come right on up to that. Thank you, Lord. For those of you who are watching by live stream, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we pray right now that in the name of Jesus, that those of you who've had that space between you and God, that in the name of Jesus, that you begin to see his face. That you get, you get into that place where his gaze is upon you and you no longer hold back, but that in Jesus' name you let it go. And that the breakthrough for what you need comes forth. And if you're believing for the impartation, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus for those who are wanting that impartation of the demonstration of the Spirit's power for the preaching and the teaching in the name of Jesus, that you just receive that right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, receive it all. That the fire of God, the fresh, holy fire of God would be upon you now in Jesus' name. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in with us. I pray that this message today has encouraged you. I pray that it's challenged you, uplifted you. I pray that you came away from this message and this encounter with God, knowing that you have literally stepped into a place where you have heard the heartbeat of God and through everything. Now, in this time, I want to talk to you. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ or your relationship is not where it needs to be. Maybe you've walked with God at one point in time and you're no longer walking with him. Or maybe you say that you're a Christian, but deep down inside, you know there's compromise in your heart. If that is you, I want you to go ahead and pray this prayer with me so that what can happen is we can talk to each other again when we see each other, either in the church or in heaven. So let's go ahead and pray. Just repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your son's blood. I thank you for the life of Jesus and for his resurrection. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I repent of them now, and I ask for you to wipe me clean by your blood. Come into my heart. I receive your salvation. And I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. I walk away from my old life and I walk into my new life. Thank you, Lord. I am born again. In Jesus' name. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, you are now born again. What I would ask for you to do is I would ask for you to contact the ministry, contact the church, and let us get to you some free material so that you can begin to receive discipleship. 
See, it's not enough just to pray a prayer. We want you to be discipled. Jesus said, make disciples of all men. So what we want to do is we want to help you in your walk. We want to help you to where you're being able to be discipled and you're being able to walk with Jesus on a daily basis. So thank you so much. God bless you.